In this video, I want to share some of my techniques for getting a super solid clean plate on some fairly difficult shots. These are my go-to methods for quickly and accurately creating clean plates using only Adobe After Effects and Photoshop. Here's the first example I want to share. I have this idea where I'll record a 360 video and use it as a reflection map for a CG object. More on that in my next video, but for now, let's just work on removing this object from the footage. It's kind of complex because we have perspective, parallax, depth of field, some lighting changes, and these grid lines that need to match up perfectly. I tested out content aware fill inside of After Effects, and as you can see, the results are just not good enough. I also tried Runway ML's in painting tool, and it struggles with this shot. By the way, there are definitely some scenarios where these tools work perfectly. It never hurts to start with the one click solution, and if it doesn't work, then go from there. All right, let's get right into it. What we basically want to do is create one single clean frame and then motion track that into the entirety of the clip. So let's find a moment here in the middle that would be good to paint our clean frame. It's something like this where we see a good amount of the surface. I'm going to hit Control or Command Alt S to save out a still frame. Now let's open that file up in Photoshop and create our clean frame. We're going to use Photoshop's generative fill. So I'm going to quickly create a mask around my object here. And then I'm going to hit generate fill, leave that blank, click generate. Some frames are a little bit odd, but sometimes it works pretty darn perfectly. I'm actually quite surprised at how generative fill was able to keep these lines parallel, and I think this frame is gonna be good enough for our purposes. Here I'm doing just a little bit of extra cleanup manually with a clone stamp tool and also some color correction with layer masks. The AI gives you a nice starting point, but sometimes you have to go in and do a little bit of manual effort to get your desired result. Now back in After Effects, let's import that Photoshop file, import it as footage, hit okay, and we know the file name frame 52 was our hero frame, and that's just good to know. Next thing we want to do is do some motion tracking with Mocha. So we could go over to our effects and type in Mocha, but I also like to use Video Copilot's FX console, which lets me hit Control or Command Space and just search for an effect. I'll search for Mocha, Mocha AE, and click the Mocha button. Mocha is going to launch, and here's our interface. What we want to do is select some areas that we want to track. So I will grab the X spline tool and select this area and then right click to deselect. I then want to give Mocha a little bit more information of this plane that I want to track. So I'll click and hold here and hit the X plus and this is going to tell Mocha to also track these areas as part of the same planar surface. Now that those are selected, we want to choose our track motion options. Let's include perspective and then track forward. Track looks really good. Let's go back to here and track backwards. All right, Mocha did a really good job, so no problem there. Now with Mocha, we have this planar surface button. And by default, it's just kind of in place here. You can see it's sticking to the surface, uh, but we don't want it there. There are times like when you're doing a phone screen where you want to just place these to a specific spot on your footage and it's going to stick and give you corner pin data for that. But in our case, we actually don't want to do that. We want to go to frame 52 and hit this button. Expand the planar surface to the entire frame. Boom. We hit that on frame 52, our hero magic frame, and those corners have gone perfectly to the corner of our footage. If we scrub forward or backward away from frame 52, we see that they start to skew with the perspective of the plane, but that's exactly what we want. Now that we've done that, we can hit save and exit out of Mocha. So we've done our tracking. Now we want to do something with it. Let's go to Mocha, drop down tracking data, create track data, select that layer that we just saw in Mocha. And now we have some data. What do we want to do with it? Well, we want to use a corner pin export option and export it to our Photoshop file hit apply export. Now you see we've got keyframes on a corner pin. 
on this cleaned up Photoshop frame and it's moving with the motion as we'd expect. Then what I would do is just uh, go to frame 52, the, the lineup frame and draw a mask on the cleaned up plane while it's turned off so I can see. And I'm just drawing a mask around the object that we want to remove. Now that that's done, we basically have this. Just a patched out area moving perfectly with that plane, thanks to Mocha. Let's turn both on and check it out. And we are looking pretty darn good. Now we just gotta adjust that area of the mask to cover up the sides that are poking out. Um, one thing that's a little weird is the mask gets applied before the corner pin. So on frame 52, it's gonna be lined up, but then on these other frames, you have to kind of just work with it this way, but it's not too bad. And then I would also just uh, hit G twice to get the mask feather tool and just drag out just to get a little bit of a feathered edge there. Now you might notice as the lighting changes in a little bit in the background, there's a little bit of a dark patch and it's not matching as nicely. Let's add a levels effect. And we could just do an overall color correction, but even better, we can grab our mask tool again and draw a mask around the area that we want that effect to be applied. It's not gonna work right away. Uh, we need to make an adjustment. Let's first relabel our masks just to keep things organized because it can get start to get confusing. Let's call this main mask and let's call this one levels. Then we want to hit E on our keyboard, drop down levels, go to compositing options, hit the plus button, and then we wanna select that levels mask. And what's happening now is basically only where this mask is, we are applying the levels effect. And then we can put that where we want it. We can also feather it as we like and get a lot of control on the brightness of this patched area here. We can do as many effects and masks as we want. Uh, it just helps to label them and color code them because it can start to get a little bit crazy. Another thing we can do is keyframe these values. So at this frame, we're happy with this here, but then earlier in time, it's a little bit too bright. So let's go back to something like here. I can also turn off this toggle mask visibility so I can see a little bit better. And I'm just gonna manually dial that in over time. And that is already looking just a little bit better. And here's an example of that in practice. I'm just repeating those same steps over and over again, tracking different areas, painting a clean still frame and crossfading between them, doing a little bit of color correction. And as you can see here, it doesn't even have to be a perfect plane. This area of the footage is far away enough from camera that Mocha can just track the general position and skew and you'll be able to create a nice patch. Thank you to FlexiSpot for sending me their C7 Premium Ergonomic Office Chair. I sit at my desk for hours at a time, so I know how important it is to have a good supportive chair. The chair comes shipped in pieces and requires a little bit of assembly. It took me about 30 minutes to put it all together. I'd say it's moderately easy to do. It has a ton of adjustability options that you'd want from an office chair. Something I noticed right away is the lumbar support. It can be locked in place, but I prefer to leave it unlocked so it adapts to my posture throughout the day. You can really feel the lumbar support compared to other chairs, so if you're someone who likes putting a pillow back there for support, then you'll really appreciate this feature. You can adjust the seat depth and the tilt and get a really nice recline. And then there's the headrest. It's really nice that it's included in the price of the chair. You don't have to buy it separate. It's not very obtrusive, so you don't notice it unless you need it. The armrests are adjustable, and that's good for me because I like to keep it at the lowest setting so it can slide right under my desk. Overall, it's a really good chair for the price. Great for someone with back issues who needs to upgrade to a more supportive chair. You can use the code C730 at the exclusive link below to get $30 off your purchase, plus a 10-year warranty and 30 days free returns. Check it out. Let's move on to our next example. In this piece of footage, we have one, two, three 
separate planes that we need to consider when removing this object. We could do the previous method and track each plane individually, but I have a little bit of a better method where we can use After Effects' 3D camera tracker in combination with a free script to make this nice and easy. The 3D track is done. We can leave everything at default settings and we're ready to go. What we wanna do is first make a ground plane for the floor. So I'll click and drag and select some points that are on the floor that are not part of the tripod there. And then right click, create solid in camera. Now we have a solid that moves along with the floor but it's not oriented correctly. You can move it around, just be careful not to click and drag it like that. We wanna just use the X and the Y so it's moving along the same plane. We can also rotate it like so. We can also hit Y for the pan behind tool and then when it says X, Y, Z, grab it to move the anchor point, hold control and snap it to a corner. That makes it a little bit easier to place it where we want it and then rotate it along that axis and scale it up. So we get something like this. Another thing that's nice to do is add a grid effect. And that's how we can check to see if our track is looking nice. And this is looking good. And I like to just give it a little bit of extra space, something like that with some overlap there and we have a ground plane that matches with our footage. Now here's the amazing thing. With this free script that came out last year, we can stamp our footage onto that 3D plane. It's basically a camera projection. This is something that I used to have to go into Cinema 4D to do it, and I always wanted a way to do it in After Effects. So huge thank you to the people who made this, and I'll put a link down below where you can go ahead and download this free script. So we go to a frame that's going to be good for the clean plate. And before we hit the button, it's actually important that the anchor point goes back to the center. So I'm going to do controller command alt home and send that anchor point to the dead center and then press plane stamp. And what we get is a 3D layer that has a projection of that frame but now it's moving with the footage because it's a 3D layer in 3D space. We can right click on the layer and reveal in Explorer and see that it saves out this PNG right in the same folder that your After Effects file was saved in. And then the easiest way to just go ahead and do it is open that frame in Photoshop and do a generative fill to clean out that area. We can then merge these layers into one, just hit Command S, save that PNG, go back to After Effects, and it's gonna auto update. And then there we have our clean patch for the floor plane. That was the super quick way, but technically it's more correct to do a clean frame before the projection. So I just exported this frame, cleaned it up in Photoshop, and what you can do is, as long as this layer is visible, we can do the projection based off a clean frame, and we get a similar result. Okay, so I did the same thing as before and created some solids, oriented them to the walls here, and we're ready to do some projection. Now in this case, we don't actually have to do any Photoshop generative fill because due to the parallax, we have the information to fill in the clean areas. We just have to do a couple of different stamp projections and that will cover the areas where it's not clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And there you have it. With just a couple clicks, a little bit of masking and feathering, we have a 3D reprojection of our walls here, and then we can turn on our floor, and we have a 3D recreation of our scene, tracked with our camera, and this is a really good starting point for adding some VFX. The last thing we need to do is create a mask around the object, and we could just keyframe a mask, but I'm going to do a 2D point track 
in the tracker tab. And what we have is a null object that just generally sticks to that area. Then let's create a new solid with command Y, make the size just a little bit bigger than our comp, turn it off, but while it's still selected, draw a mask around the object that we are removing, and then just give it a little bit of outward feather. So we have that, then parent it to the track null, and it's sticking pretty well to the motion. On top of that, we can hit M and keyframe our mask path if we need to adjust it a little bit over time. And then tell our clean plate to be matted by that mat. And then our result is just this. And that does it for this tutorial. I still see a few areas where some more adjustments could improve the shot, but we'll leave it at that for now. I hope you have all the info you need to track and clean out any object from any piece of footage. It's all about problem solving, using these different techniques in combination, and using AI to speed up your workflow, but not rely 100% on a magic button, and working in a way where you can be fast, flexible, and have a high quality result.